guys, what's up? You're watching the EJ Tech Show and we've got a new monster in the house and I'm not talking about so, although you wouldn't want to make him mad. Rude. <laughs> I'm talking about this, the new Samsung Galaxy M51. And if you've seen any promos or marketing material for this phone, you know that the headlining feature is that massive 7000 mAh battery. Now let me put that into perspective for you. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, which yeah. is a tablet, has an 8000 mAh battery. So this isn't far off. This is pretty much tablet territory now. And that's a good place to start, I think, the battery performance. Let's talk about that. But also, is it just about the battery? Is it just a one-trick pony or is there more to this one? So I think the M series up till now has been mostly of a one-trick pony where it's a good, good enough phone, good enough daily driver, but it's the battery that really sells people. Yeah. Here it has the battery, but it also has the performance chops to back that up, which is surprising because this is the first time we can say that about a Samsung phone that doesn't cost less than, that costs, sorry, less than like somewhere around 60, 70,000. Yeah, and which, also one of the, I think the only M series phone that I'm aware of yeah. that doesn't give you an Exynos processor, but gives you a Snapdragon processor, yes. a Snapdragon 730G. To be fair, can, right now of the new current generation, apart from the Fold 2, yeah. This is pretty much the only smartphone in Samsung's lineup that's giving you a Snapdragon processor, which yeah. is which is saying quite something. But yeah, and we also know that by benchmark tests and also performance tests that the Snapdragon processor is slightly better equipped to handle yeah. that extra bit of pressure. See, what I mean is the Exynos 9611, like I've said with every previous M series review, it's not bad, but it's just about okay. But anyway, keeping that aside, this phone gets the Snapdragon 730G chipset, it gets a 6.7 inch FHD plus display, mm -hmm. it gets a 7000 mAh battery and it gets 25 watt fast charging. So on paper, this is really just an A series device. Yeah. Like that's really where they've mm -hmm. gone with the M series. They've taken it so far that it's now inching towards the uh, phones like the A51 and A71. In fact, if you just compare it like apples to apples, this is pretty much on top because this has a much larger battery. Sure. It may not get the extra bells and whistles that comes with the A-series like the Samsung Pay features. Or the in-display fingerprint scanner. Exactly, it may not get those, but for what it's worth, I don't think those features are deal breakers. Mm -hmm. This phone just offers way more value for money than anything else Samsung offers. And I'm so, so, so glad that they brought it out at this time because at this time we also have this in the house. This phone is the OnePlus Nord. And this is OnePlus trying to claw its way back into the mid-range Android series, which it helped establish at one point in yeah. time. They're now clawing their way back into it with the OnePlus uh, Nord. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're on the uh, sorry the cusp of announcing another one. But this gets the Snapdragon 765G. So it's still more powerful in terms of specs on paper than the yeah. Snapdragon 730G. But now that Samsung is offering a phone at this price point that's close to the OnePlus Nord with the Snapdragon processor, yeah. presents a very interesting proposition to buyers, which basically says that you want battery and you want good performance, come to Samsung. Mm. You want really good performance, then perhaps you can take a look at the Nord. But now you really don't have to have that whole brain scratching thing of do I sacrifice performance for that larger battery on the M series because that was the case that we had with the M31S which also has a respectable 6000 mAh battery but then again 9611 processor underpowered good cameras good display good battery life but again the chipset is the main yeah. pain point that I think the M51 solves very very well that problem has just totally gone away in my opinion mm. but uh, you haven't answered my original question how's yeah. the battery performance? <laughs> It is good. It is good. It's. I'll say this. There are other 5,000 mAh battery phones and 6,000 mAh battery phones like Samsung's own lineup that perform comparably. You're not going to make, uh, notice a huge difference if you're coming from one of those phones. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming from a phone that let's say has a 4,500 mAh battery, you'll definitely notice the difference. Yeah. Which is to say this will last you at least two days even with heavy usage. But when it comes to charging it, that will take you around a good... Uh, two hours mm. so I would say that yes definitely um, understand that this is not something that you can quickly charge and run and gun and go out yeah. uh, go out about your day um, in fact I would say that I wish Samsung had adopted one thing from their tablet series onto this Samsung's Tab S7 Plus has a 10,090 mAh battery <clears throat> easily one of their largest batteries on offer but that charges significantly faster in proportion to how you charge this. 
which means Samsung's obviously done some sort of tinkering with the battery technology yeah. and with the charging technology to make sure that the Tab S7 Plus charges faster. I wish they'd done that here as well because honestly, people deserve it. Yeah. People paying 25,000 rupees for an M series phone, which is essentially Samsung's budget series, apart from bar, let's say, the M01, they, people would deserve that. And if we're speaking about things that people deserve, people would, yeah. I think, enjoy having something like a plastic screen protector in the box, which is something you get with the A series. Because now that we've reached this price point, we've come, we've come up all the way from somewhere like 13,000 with the old M30, mm -hmm. all the way up to 25,000 with this, the M51. It would have been nice to see something like that, a screen protector in the, sorry, not a screen protector, a plastic, plastic back cover yeah. on the back. Because this phone is a complete fingerprint magnet and like any other plastic phone that has a shiny reflective surface, it is susceptible to scratches which will show up in day-to-day -day use. And this has picked up a few scratches to be honest yeah. uh, in our time of use. Uh, but I don't think any M-series phone did offer you one, but like no, said, never with, this, did with, this, with this price point, exactly. it should have been included. And if you also watch my uh, hands-on unboxing video, I've said, I've said the same thing. I was like pretty surprised because I knew the price. I was like, oh, they didn't actually give you a plastic cover That's over what. here. But okay, uh, apart from that, this is a very big phone. And because it's got that 7000 mAh battery, this is also a heavy phone. But that being said, the weight is very well distributed. Yeah. It's not like, it. it is still giving you that easy to use uh, hand usage. It's not like you want to struggle with this too much. It's still, a, you can still have to use two hands with it, but it's okay. The ergonomics, the weight distribution yeah. is very well done over here. Uh, it's also very thick. I think it's 9.3 millimeter thick yeah. thickness. Uh, that's okay, but uh, you're still getting a headphone jack, you're getting a USB-C port, and you're getting that uh, loudspeaker at the bottom over there. I think there is also a dual SIM slot over here. Yes. All right, so display now, and very good display, 6.7 yeah. inches FHD yeah. plus. Samsung knows how to make really good displays. Uh, you're also getting a whole bunch over here that uh, houses that front camera. and. It's a great display everything, but I think it's high time that we finally saw a high refresh rate display on a Samsung M series phone. I don't think that'll happen until Samsung brings it to their A series phone. Because mm, true, this is true. pretty much the same display as the Samsung A71 and yeah. one of the biggest ways you can tell that is if you take a look at the display on the M31S, it has a smaller yeah. um, infinity o notch than this one. This gets a larger one like the A series usually does. Yeah. So it's clear that Samsung is not planning to bring any new features into this price point without first bringing them to the A series. Yeah. Except for probably the Snapdragon chip. Oh no, just Samsung, just put that in everything, please. Okay, so no high refresh rate, but still a very nice display. Uh, you're getting a Super AMOLED Plus panel over here. It's very punchy, very vibrant, great viewing angles as well. And it gets a wide one L1 certification, which means you can stream full HD content from Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hotstar or wherever else you watch content. So it's good in all those regards. Uh, the cameras though, Yeah. so it's getting a fairly versatile camera setup, yeah. right? It's, it's getting what we've seen previously on M-series phones, it's getting a 64 megapixel main sensor and additional sensors for ultra wide macro depth, which is to say this is still a far more versatile um, setup than we've seen from other competitors at this price point as well. But the main thing that you need to remember is not the fact that this has four sensors in the back. It's that they're all four very good sensors. They all do very, very well. In fact, one of the main pain points that a lot of uh, reviewers at, at least had for the OnePlus Nord was that even though it gets all those four lenses, it could have just had two that would have made the camera system a whole lot better. But the fact that they had to bundle in um, lower spec additional sensors to sell that whole quad camera um, thing because of that, it wasn't the best sensor. This, however, doesn't make that mistake. This has really good sensors on the back and they take really nice pictures, whether it's ultra wide, whether it's macro, whether it's depth, portrait is good. But uh, what and about night photography? Because that's always been a weak spot for Samsung M series phones in general, even A series phones. That honestly is something that I would say night photography is not something you're really going to be happy with at a price point below 30K anyway, regardless of what phone it is. OnePlus, yes, historically gives you slightly better performance in low light, um, but you're really not going to be trying to do any major dark uh, or astrophotography, I should say, with either of those phones, nor with this, nor with the OnePlus Nord. So 
I'd honestly say night mode is not a big deal breaker for me at this price point. Okay, so in terms of software, the Galaxy M51 runs on Samsung's One UI 2.1, which means that this phone gets uh, similar features, well, exact same features that you've seen on, let's say, the Galaxy M31s, like single take. It's a very nice feature to have. So when you click uh, the single take option, uh, the camera will, uh, the algorithm will at least click loads of different options like videos, GIFs and pictures mm -hmm. and then you get to decide whichever one you want to choose, a very handy feature to have and this also runs on Android 10 so you've got the best of Android 10. Now I don't know exactly when Android 11 will be coming out but I'm guessing it'll be yeah. pretty soon. One thing that I didn't love was the amount of bloatware present here because there is now a fair we're, amount of bloatware. We're, we're coming into the 25k category so this is a spot where we might want to see the bloatware now starting to come slightly lower. But apart from the Samsung stock apps that are here, there are quite a few more that you won't want, I'm guessing. Yeah. You may want them, I don't know. I certainly didn't appreciate the fact that they were there. And the only trouble with that is to not have them installed, you will have to navigate a rather complicated series of opt-in, opt-out agreements where you'll have to say, okay, I don't want these apps. You can completely delete them once you set up the phone, but it'd just be nice if they weren't there to begin with. True, but uh, I'll say that this bloatware doesn't seem to slow down the Snapdragon 730G processor. It's a very good processor, very good for multitasking, very good for all your daily stuff. And it's also really, really good for gaming. Yeah, gaming performance is actually one of the best use cases for these phones because Honestly, it's something that you couldn't say about Exynos 9611 yeah. processors yeah. because that was always the case. Yeah, it's a good daily driver, you'll get your web browsing done and all that, you can open some mail, you can do a little bit of multitasking, but gaming, it was always, you know what, just put it to the lowest graphics setting yeah. and hope for the best. This one, it's okay, you can play this on high graphics settings with max frame rate, no problems yeah. whatsoever. It will run slightly hotter, but that's okay because, again, this is a phone that's under 30k, it's 25,000 rupees and it's got a Snapdragon 730G chipset, so 7 series, not 8 series, so it's not going to be the fastest, the latest and greatest, but again, for mobile gaming, it's absolutely fine. Call of Duty Mobile uh, is great, tap type games are also great on this, no problem in the gaming department whatsoever. So uh, let's wrap things up now. Yeah. And. Uh, You've used this phone more extensively than I yeah. have. I did use it briefly and in my brief time with it, I liked a lot about this phone. The 7000mAh battery, the Snapdragon 730G, uh, the build as well. I mean, the scratches, yes, you will get some scratches. Do keep that in mind, so do get a plastic cover. But other than that, I don't have too many complaints with this phone. It's also giving you a really good camera performance. And overall, I think Samsung has another hit with the, this specific M series phone. To be honest, I'm surprised that the culmination of the M series led to this. I honestly thought it would stay in that price bracket for much longer than it did. It's climbed up through the ranks much faster because I think Samsung now realizes that the M series is the one um, series that sells far more in this price range as compared to even competitors from Xiaomi, Realme, etc. Because people really love the fact that they can get such a large battery on their smartphone. and. It's a no-brainer, that, that's what this is. This phone is easy to recommend. At certain price points, OnePlus is easy to recommend. At certain other price points, iPhones are easy to recommend. At this price point, Samsung has made a phone that's really, really easy to recommend. Okay, cool, so let's wrap things up now before Samsung decides to launch another M series phone. Yeah. They are more than capable of it. Yeah. M51, that's what this was, and we really hope you enjoyed watching this episode. And if you like the M51, let us know what you think about it in the comment section. And if you're watching this on the Editor G app, then Good for you. We'll be back real soon. Thank you for watching.